Hi, it's Mike with UTastic. I'm here at the end of GoToConf 2015. I'm sitting here with Corey Haynes, who gave a talk about fun with lambdas. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Absolutely. Um, so fun with lambdas, they sound, you know, lambdas are always one of those comp sci kind of sounding scary things. What What is so fun about them? Well, it's along those lines of coding can be a joy when you put really crazy constraints on what you're doing. And so the idea is what can you do if all you have is a lambda yeah. that takes one argument, can return one thing, start with nothing, and then slowly build up things. So what we did was we went through what are called the piano axioms, okay. which are statements about the natural numbers. They were developed by an Italian mathematician named Giuseppe Piano, and they just say things like, hey, zero is a number. Okay. And hey, x equals x. And okay, so, so it's so these basic very truths. basic truths, stuff you learned in grade school mm -hmm. about equality, that if like, you know, transitive, x equals y, y equals z, x equals z. Right. And so if you start with these, and then all you have is a lambda, can you actually build up enough to have a numbering system? Mm -hmm. And so we start with, you know, zero. You know, and build a function called is zero. But then to actually see if you're right, you have to build an assert function. Right. Well, to build an assert, you have to have an if statement. To have an if statement, you need true and false. And so starting with nothing, you end up having to go back and build these fundamental structures and these fundamental uh, sort of concepts in programming. And it's really just like, hey, what happens if you do it? Yeah. Um, you know, there's the saying of, like, don't try this at home. Yeah. This is more don't try this at work, <laughs> but do try it at home. Like, yeah. This is stuff that you should do at home, delete, have a good time, and, you know, one of the things I really like to do is do exercises that take you away from, like, the work you do. Mm -hmm. And we all, you know, like to program, so why not program in the craziest possible way? Right. Yeah. And it just makes me think about the, the code retreat mm -hmm. exercises you do. It Did this talk, well, um, just to put some backstory in it, it, it the code retreats you would do um, well I don't need to tell you mm -hmm. but he would do different exercises where you would not do an if mm -hmm. or only use objects or don't use a number yeah uh, things like that is did, did this talk kind of evolve from those thought exercises um, the idea of programming with really heavy constraints always does like yeah. that's one of the things I like to do in workshops and things mm -hmm. the idea for this talk and the reason that I'm doing it actually came about from uh, being in a uh, sensory deprivation tank. Oh, really? Yeah, so I went, I, you know, here in Chicago, there's a place that you can do it, so um, went and did this one time, and of course you get into this booth, or the, you're floating, and it's dark, Yeah. Um, and like, I remember getting in and going, well, what am I going to think about? Because I've got an hour in like yeah. pitch black and no sound. You, you got to think about something. Yeah. So I was like, oh, hey, well, let me think about what are called church numerals. And I started doing that and then just started to kind of think about lambdas and like mm -hmm. a little bit of this lambda calculus stuff. And um, that came out of that. And I started actually working on a book about the lambda calculus and understanding lambdas and things like that, um, which is kind of on pause right now. But started doing that. Incidentally, I did find out that they do not put eels ah. into sensory deprivation tanks. Well, do you just hallucinate the eels then? No, or? no. I thought they might put them in <laughs> yeah. there. I remember being in there, laying there, going, "What if there were eels?" Yeah, but there's not. Well, I've heard of I just I've heard of people going into those and they're actually hallucinating. Mm -hmm. That like our minds are so used to the constant stimulation that that it, it plays tricks on you. Yeah, that's what they say. Um, I didn't. I mostly just thought about lambdas. Well, if you, I guess eels. maybe you kind of already had a topic where somebody goes in and it's like, okay, now what? Yeah, now what? Then yeah. you let it go. I was also worried about um, regressing to uh, being a Neanderthal, like in <laughs> altered states, but that also did not happen. Yeah, I did yeah. not regress. You did not come out and hit somebody with a club. I did not. Oh, that's I was I was actually worried about that because yeah. you never know. I saw it in a movie. Oh. <laughs> um, but that's where this sort of this idea came from. And then I've, I want to start doing a lot more talks. I've taken the last probably about a year, year and a half off of speaking at conferences. And I wanted to come back and do more like live coding. <laughs> and just like talks where I'm up there. It's me. It's them. 
just writing code yeah. and things like that. And this is a fun, it's a talk that you don't see a lot. Right. And I'm not really one to give talks that are useful, <laughs> I think. Um, and especially my coding talks. It's yeah. like, there's, you know, the talks here at GoTo have been wonderful. You know, they've, one of the great things about this conference is they cover like Java and they cover C Sharp. They had a Futures of Java and Futures of C Sharp talk. Yes. And so they cover all of this great stuff. And I like to think, you know, it never hurts to have a talk that yeah. is completely useless. Yeah. And that's, my, that's where I come into play. I mean, it's not entirely as you've described it, and the code retreat exercises kind of prove that they're not. It's not a useless exercise. Sometimes it's let's think about something that isn't just the stale, dry. How do I execute X uh, things? And it's like one of the things I always liked about Bob Martin's talks is how he starts off with those little. Diver, little yeah, little, yeah. little off, off topic, totally irrelevant, but fun, and you never know what to expect. I mean, you know to expect that he's going to talk about something yeah. about gravity, and he's going to be really exuberant about yeah, it. Yeah. But what is it going to be, and what does it have to do with the topic? It may or may not have any relevance at all. But it's fun. It's, it's so like, fun. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you go to, uh, when you're educated at all, it, there has to be fun. There has to be something to kind of hook you. Otherwise, it's just lectures. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and why not, you know, sit there and watch somebody code up mm -hmm. something that is not directly applicable, but is still like coding and like, oh, hey, you know, a lot of people have heard about building up number systems yeah. like Lambda and all of that, but actually seeing it done and justified with these axioms is yeah. more of, it's a little bit of entertainment, but also that it's you know, still learning a little it's bit. Very, it's very relevant. It's salient. It's, it's on topic. It's just... Not day to day yeah, use, but yeah. you shouldn't do it at work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but always you should do it at night. It's a good way to um, sort of get into the mood of programming. You know, doing something that you don't mind throwing away. I mean, I've done this and thrown it away many, many times. Yeah, while preparing for the talk. So, yeah. So it made it a little bit fun to even prepare for. Oh, it was a blast to prepare yeah. for. I, I like. I really enjoy preparing for live coding talks because it is like. You can't get up there and have an unexpected error happen mm -hmm. because standing up there, you know, it's horrible standing up there when you're trying to debug something. Yeah. And it's horrible sitting in the audience because everyone in the audience sees where the bug is. Yeah. Except that you can't tell the speaker because yeah. they can't hear you. And so live coding talks are always like you have to have them down. Yeah, well, I mean, but maybe when you're doing something that's a little bit more of a free-form performance, if you make a bug, eh, you know. Yeah, if you can it's, recover it's from it. It's jazz. You know, they, they, what do they say? There's no <laughs> such thing as a wrong note. There's just the right note played in a different way. Yeah, there we go. Something there along we those go. lines. But, there we go. Um, uh, but if you're doing it like, oh, you have to do X, Y, and Z, yeah, there's definitely. Yeah, and that's like my talk. If, you know, you start with nothing. And 50 minutes later, we have a number system. Yeah. If I, like, lose track somewhere, yeah. then we're not going to have that at the end. And it's like, you can't. And then it's just like, why did, you know, what did we get out of this yeah. thing? There's only um, Ben Orenstein okay. is a master at live coding talks. Yeah. He's really, really good at it. I don't know if he practices it and, like, has all his keystrokes memorized. Um, I know I do. Like, I... Yeah. I practice it over and over again until I know the flow of the code. Oh yeah, you um, you were uh, big in the katas and things like that. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so is it is it a similar kind of preparation that you go through? Yeah, okay. and it feels a lot the same way too. Of just like that, writing the same code over and over again until you stop really thinking about the code and you start thinking more about the flow of the code and the way that the concepts flow through it. One of the things about this is that we, in this talk, I talk about assert, and then that leads to if, and then that leads to true and false. And one of the things I tried to do was have it where I was sort of defining them above the previous thing. Okay. And then having it where when I implemented it, it made something lower, easier to implement and clear, and then eventually, like, the test passed. Okay, so and you're it kind was, of, like, going up and down and up yeah. and down. Yeah, and so I really worked on the flow, not just of the code, but of where it is in the file. And so even, like, having a tempo and, and a rhythm. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, so. Well, thank you very much for awesome. taking the time thanks. to speak with me. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. So there we go. That's the end of the conference. Awesome. Yeah. So it, it ended up, it started a little slow today, but I ended up getting um, uh, interviews with uh, uh, Jay Fields, um, Good. Trisha G, mm-hmm. G um, a whole bunch of people. That I'm just drawing a blank on it. <laughs> Did you get um, Chris Michael John? Uh, no, no, but I got, uh, um, I got, I got, I got, I got, Oh, there it is. We got Jay Fields, uh, Attila uh, Segedi. Segedi, uh-huh. uh, you know he's uh, Hungarian. Yep. Yeah, and because uh, I was, I wanted to pronounce his name correctly, and I, I said, "Is Bulgarian?" He's like, "No, Hungarian." Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jay Fields, we had some fun uh, rescheduling uh-huh. with Kyle. Um, this Yo, guy, Gil Tana. Uh-huh. Oh my God, we're going to be having a second interview uh-huh. on uh-huh. Nice. because. We finished the interview, and then he and I walked downstairs, and we're talking, and he's talking about Java, and then he basically explained to me in, in a few minutes the entire Java life cycle. Now, I don't mean like programming, I mean the community process, and that, like, oh yeah, Oracle says they're end of life in Java 7, but that doesn't really mean what... What it sounds think. like it means, yeah. And that, you know, like the, the over JK is actually just the reference implementation here on the chunk. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, and there, there's so much more involved in the community and, and how things um, actually work between different uh, organizations. Uh, so, like, Java 6 is still actually being supported, but it's being supported by uh, Red Hat because when mm-hmm. uh, Oracle drops support for a product, they uh, basically sign it over to Red Hat. Oh, so there's okay. all kinds of oh, here's your, cool. Oh, here's your badge. Um, there's all kinds of cool things about that. So I was talking with him, and I'm just kind of looking at him. Going, I remember some of the things you said, <laughs> but there was so much dense information that even he agreed that, yeah, we probably should have talked about this on camera, but I'm like, I think this is another conversation. Yeah, get so, another conversation. Yeah, so we're going to do a Skype interview in the next few weeks. That's uh, awesome. This. Yeah, that, um, that's a really great thing to get into, too, is... <laughs>